I was thrilled to get an email today from Waves Factory announcing a new addition to the likes of Soothe 2, Golf Loss, Smart EQ, and more. The surprisingly banal titled Equalizer. This promises to intelligently and automatically EQ your tracks. So let's see how it stacks up. This is Equalizer. What it basically does is split up your signal into 32 individual bands, which will then analyze the input gain for each band and automatically raise or lower the level to get them to unity gain, essentially making all frequencies have the same level. I would say that most of the automatic spectral correction plugins work with a similar paradigm. They listen for frequencies that stick out and try to adjust them for more balanced signal. Basically, a series of dynamic EQs. Then it's up to us engineers to determine whether these adjustments are desirable and make appropriate changes. So let's hear it in action. Let's try it on electric piano. When you insert it, you'll see the spectral graph start reacting to the audio. This is similar to Soothe 2, where you usually see some kind of corrective activity right away. I just gotta say, I love this gorgeous GUI. The animation is wonderful, plus it's minimal and easy to understand. Although there's one feature that isn't very obvious right away, but we'll see that shortly. So what it's doing here is cutting widely around 300 hertz, which makes sense. A lot of body and mud can live there in electric pianos, and it's boosting quite a bit in the highs. I like this. The electric piano sounds more present now, and similar to how I would EQ this in a mix. Let's explore the controls. The first, most important control to notice is the amount. As you can probably guess, this controls the strength of the overall cutting and boosting. I found it sounds best in the default 50% to 60% range, and you can start to hear artifacts at higher settings, especially on complex material. Cut and boost controls are useful for balancing what equalizer is doing to the signal. Many times, you just want to cut the mud out of a signal. If you reduce boost to zero, now equalizer is purely a subtractive EQ. Or if you only want to add highs, say, then reduce the cut. You also get delta solo buttons, so you can hear exactly what frequencies equalizer is attenuating. Very nice to have. Attack and release can give you more control over how quickly equalizer reacts to the signal. Personally, I found these usually work best at the default position, and the developer confirmed this with me, saying that you only need to adjust the attack on percussive material. I like how this is clearing up a little mud and controlling the subs with a little high-end boost. But you can hear how wonky this drum loop gets if I push it too hard. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like this. This could make for a great creative effect too. And you can set it crazy like this, then use the mix control to blend in the more compressed effect. Nice. For now, I'll leave it at the more conservative settings. Rounding off the controls, you have a mid-side control where you can choose to apply the effect to only the mid or the side channel.
Default is normal stereo processing here at 50%. And there's a tilt feature, which basically allows you to quickly push the processing into brightening or darkening the sound. It's useful if you find the signal, you just want to quickly get it a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. So, you remember earlier when I mentioned there's a hidden feature? Here it is. Say you have a guitar and it sounds a little dull. Once again, adding equalizer makes it sound better. But what's this over here? It's boosting a bunch of low end below 100 hertz. I don't really want any low end added to this guitar. It just risks muddying up the mix, and it isn't integral to the tone. So what do you do? You can turn off the boost here, but you lost that wonderful sparkle it added on the top end, so what do you do? That's when the per band control comes in. You can take the mouse and draw your own response curves. Check this out. These lovely little nodes represent each of the 32 bands. And if you draw on the top of the graph, this will increase the amount of processing. or decrease the amount of processing if you draw below the line. So in this case, I just run my mouse across the bottom in that base area, below 100. And now it's not processing on the low end anymore. That's great. And if you don't like what you did, you can hold Option or Alt, and it'll snap the filters back to zero. Very cool. Let's try it on the bass. Well, that's great. It's adding some nice top end to the synth. And again, reducing some of the mud. Now I have it on all the tracks in this project. Let's A, B. I find Equalizer is adding a little more air and depth to the mix. It's subtle and easier to hear in good monitors or headphones, but it's nice. And you can even use Equalizer on a full mix. Let's check it out. Again, the default settings are really like how this brings the mix back to life a bit. And I will state, I don't like this on a full mix or drums as much past 60%. Transients and frequencies start to leap out and sound unnatural. So be careful when mastering. But I really like what it's doing around the 50 to 60%. I'm impressed with Wave Factory Equalizer. We've had a few affordable challengers come along in the spectral correction space, but I think this might be the best for under $100. It's better than Rezo, not as harsh a smooth operator, not as difficult as DSEQ, and cheaper than Soothe 2, Smart EQ, or Gullfoss. Those pricier plugins offer more features and deeper control, but for most people, Equalizer is the perfect place to start, offering quick, simple solutions to correct mud and resonances in tracks. Grab it while it's cheap. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, mix well.